One of the things I want to tell you about leadership style is that you don't just have one. You may have one or two that are your strongest and one or two that are your weakest, and you may use all of the leadership styles in different circumstances. So a good leader is going to use these different leadership styles. And there's no right or wrong, right? Different leadership styles are for different kinds of things. So let's talk about those. Commanding. I'm sure all of you know somebody who's commanding, right? This person demands immediate compliance. Do what I tell you to do, right? You know people like this? People who say, this is the problem, this is how you're gonna solve it, go do it right now. In my way or high way. They have a drive to achieve, initiative, self-control. This style works best in a crisis, right? Because if you're in a crisis, let's say, um, let's say when you have the floods here, right? You don't want a leader that says, well, what do you think? Should we move now? Should we stay here? You want a leader that says, okay, now we're moving, now we're getting out of this building, now we're doing things, right? That's a commanding. So that works best in a, with, uh, in a crisis to make an immediate decision or sometimes to work with a problem employee. Sometimes if you work with somebody who is a problem, you can't always just be trying to understand them. You have to make a decision. What are the weaknesses? When you work with a commanding person, do they ask you your opinion? No, they tell you how to do it, right? So how many of you, raise your hands, how many of you know a commanding? Know this stuff? Do you know somebody who has this stuff? It doesn't have to be here at work, it can be anywhere. Be the military is a good <laughs> example of this. Yeah, I was thinking actually uh, immigration, right? Uh, when I went to go through immigration, I was standing in the right, wrong place because they had to take my picture and they go, no. Oh, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we want you to do, right? So they need to do that because you have several people in line behind you. You can't be wasting his time being nice to me and talking to me. I understand that. So commanding is one style, and we all do this at some point. Yeah? And we have to do it. Visionary. This is the person who thinks, this is how I'm going to change libraries in my country. This is the model library. And he talks about, come with me. If you come with me, or she, if you come with me, we will be able to have these new libraries. And this is how it will be. They have a lot of self-confidence. They have empathy. They're change agents. And this style works best when a new vision or a clear direction is needed in a place. So let's say you want to take the libraries in EMR, public libraries, and transform them into to modern libraries. You need a visionary person. Somebody who can vision what that's going to look like. Their weakness is at times they have trouble communicating the vision clearly. And if they don't communicate the vision, they're not very good leaders, right? So they have to communicate. Do you know people that are visionary? Yeah? Have you talked? It doesn't have to be just in the library field. Do you know of leaders that are visionary? Do you know of others that you think of that are visionary? People who talk about where we're going. Yeah, a lot. And politicians. Politicians, <laughs> yeah. Politicians, yes. Politicians like to be visionary. Um, but there are also people maybe in your community who talk about how they want the community to change, how they want things to be different. All right? And sometimes you may be visionary in your work. You may say, well, the way it's working now is not right. Let's make it this vision. Right? So everybody can be visionary. It doesn't just have to be the politician. Affiliative. This is the one that creates harmony and builds emotional bonds. This is the one that says people come first. They have empathy, building relationships, communication. It works best when there's a conflict on a team and to motivate people during stressful circumstances. The problem with this style is they avoid conflict. They're not so happy about doing that. So if there's a conflict at work, they'll try not to hear about it. Right, because they only like good things to happen. They're a positive group, this, this the affiliative style. Do you know people like this? Somewhat? Yeah? Okay. Democratic. This is who forges consensus through participation. What do you think? So before making a decision, this style of leadership will go around and say, well, what do you think? 
Can you give me opinions about this particular decision? They have collaboration, team leadership, communication, and this style works best to buy buy-in or consensus or to get input from valuable employees. Right? Very important. Weaknesses. Sometimes there's more listening than action. Right? Sometimes they can ask you so many times about the action and you haven't made a decision yet. You want to like make a decision. So do you know people like this? Yeah? Yeah. Democratic. Yeah. Pace setting. This is the group that sets high standards for performance. Do as I do now. <laughs> and they're a little bit different from the commanding because they're doing the work alongside with you, but you have to follow their pace. They're conscientious, they have a drive to achieve, they initiate, they get a lot of quick results from a highly motivated and competent team. But they don't always recognize the emotions of others because they're on their own path, right, of doing something and trying to get it done. Um, this style will also burn out their workers if they, if they continue this style all the time because they're constantly saying, you have to do this now, this is what we have to do, come on, we're going, we're doing this, First we had this plan, now we've got this plan, now we've got another plan. They always have something that they're doing. Right? There's no time to rest because they're constantly achieving and they're judging how well you achieve because if you're not working up to their standards, you're gonna be off their team. They're not gonna like that. Yeah, questions? No? Coaching. This is the group that just develops people for the future. They'll say, try this. Somebody comes to them with a problem or a decision, they say, try this. Developing others, empathy, self-awareness. This style works best when helping employees improve performance or develop long-term strengths. But sometimes they can have trouble articulating how others can achieve the vision. So they sort of get, can get lost in this, um, how would I describe it, this sort of emotional relationship with you and they sort of forget where you're supposed to be going. They can say, okay, this is what you're supposed to be doing right now, but they don't kind of get you to the end. Do you know anybody like this? That coaches? That gives you suggestions? I don't know, my husband does this to me all the time. <laughs> 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 He's constantly coaching me and I'm saying, no. 